uh, holding back people, but if you don't get to the minimum level, I have no choice. And uh, so it's really uh, a warning here to uh, take this class seriously. For most people, it's not an easy class, and you do need to work. And I'm seeing uh, very few, it's, uh, I have a sample of two of, or three people who come to my office hours and ask questions. Uh, that's not enough in a class of 40. Uh, clearly, more people would benefit from asking more questions. In class, after class, during office hours, we can make appointments. Uh, so think about this. OK, so let's. Uh, Talk now about 2.1. Okay. okay, so we did a few things in uh, 2.1, and uh, I guess we are at about page 41 uh, talking about bounded sequences. Well, so this, the title is, I guess, sequences, and the, the, the definition I want to talk about now is bounded sequence. An is, say, to be bounded if there is k somewhere in R, such that an is less than k. So uh, the, the type of inequality is not very important. I put, I put a strict inequality there, but for all n in the naturals. OK, so this is what it means for sequence to be bounded. Note how important the order of uh, the statements is. If instead of saying that an is less than k for some k for all n, that would mean that my k could vary. I want the same k for every n. I want the same one. That's why I'm saying there is k first. And then such that an is less than k for every n. Okay, so the order in, uh, of your statements is quite important. That's something else. I, I was talking to several people about homework due on Thursday, and they, they would uh, typically say, well, an converges to a, so this means an minus a is less than epsilon. No, that's not the definition. You need to use the complete definition. You need to say, for every epsilon, there is a capital N, so that if lowercase n is bigger than capital N, then an minus a is less than epsilon. Just writing this like this is not going to lead you anywhere. You need the capital N. That's, that's your main tool. So be careful about memorizing these definitions properly. So, first property, if an is convergent, then it is bound. A convergent sequence is always bounded. That's uh, what this property says. I'm not going to write a formal proof. Uh, the, the proof is, uh, is done in the notes. Let me just explain to you what the idea is. Because of convergence, so let's talk about the idea of a proof. So we know that uh, an is converging to some a. So we have a here. 
And according to our definition, we can, uh, so in our definition, let's use epsilon equal one. Okay, because the end converges to A, I can pick any epsilon I want, provided it's strictly positive. Then uh, I know that there is N such that if N is bigger than capital N, then AN minus A is less than 1. And we know that AN minus A less than 1 in absolute value is the same as AN minus A between minus 1 and 1, which is the same as AN between minus 1 plus A and 1 plus A. Okay, so we have uh, minus 1 plus A here, let's say, 1 plus A here. And we know that the sequence AN is in here for N bigger than capital A, according to our definition. Right? So clearly, this part of the sequence is bounded. It's between minus 1 plus A and 1 plus A. Now, it's not the whole sequence because of this condition. But it's actually the main part of a sequence because I have inf uh, all the terms of my sequence that are in here except for finitely many. Okay, maybe the other ones are jumping around. We don't know. We don't know what the sequence is. So maybe they are far away from here. Maybe not. But what we know is that after a certain rank, all my terms are in here. Now, what do I do about the first terms? Because there are finitely many of them, I know there is the largest and the smallest one. So this is bound to two. And what I can do is take the bound, uh, the, the, the maximum of the, of the bounds that I have. And I have, so I have this bound, this upper bound, this lower bound. I'll have another upper bound and lower bound for the other terms. And then I take the biggest one of these guys. That's going to be an upper bound, and the smallest one of the two others, and it's going to be my lower bound, and I'll be done. Okay, so that's the idea of a proof. But what I want to point out is that the main idea is to write down the definition, and that's all we have. We write down the definition of convergence, we pick epsilon equal 1, we could pick any epsilon we want, we could even let it uh, uh, be epsilon. Uh, and without, but to be more concrete here, we picked epsilon equal 1, and that, therefore if I know A, I know exactly what this number is. And uh, uh, we show like this that uh, a, a convergent sequence is bounded. Okay? For instance, so that's one way. Oh, yeah, okay. So maybe before I talk about this. So is, is the converse true? Is the converse of this property true? Is it true that a bounded sequence is always convergent? No. It's not true. Counter example. If, uh, if, say if it's always two. Yes. Then it's convergent. Oh, okay. Um, yes. 
you have a sequence that is bounded below but goes to infinity at the top. No, but we're, we're talking, so the converse is to start with a bounded sequence and to show that it's not necessarily convergent. Minus one to the end. Minus one to the end is, is always a very good thing to try. Very simple, but has lots of properties. Absolute value of an is one, therefore this is clearly a bounded sequence. Okay. At this point, we are not quite ready to prove that it's not convergent. But intuitively, it's clear that it's not going to converge because I go from minus 1 to plus 1, and uh, therefore I'm not approaching anything. But we'll introduce in a little while the notion of subsequence, and then we'll be able to prove that this is not a convergent sequence. Okay, so for the time being, we, we just uh, say it. So the converse is not true. No. example. So what we have uh, shown already is that when we have a geometric uh, sequence, so we know already that Cn converges to zero if C in absolute value is less than one. Okay, we, we proved that last time. Uh, so we'd like to complete the picture here by looking at, uh, so now assume that C is strictly bigger than 1. And then of course this is going to blow up. It's not going to converge. If C is negative, it's going to fluctuate. If it's positive, it's just going to infinity. How do we show that? Well, let's use uh, uh, Bernoulli's inequality again and write that C. So let's write C as um, C minus 1 plus 1. And let's call this guy A. So let's call this A plus 1. Because uh, C in absolute value is supposed to be strictly, strictly bigger than 1, you see that this guy A is going to be strictly positive. So we can write C as A plus 1 with A strictly positive number. If we look at Cn, we see that then this, this becomes A plus 1 to the n. And by Bernoulli's inequality, this is larger than 1 plus n a. Now, 1 plus n a is not bounded. Why not? It increases without bound, but if we want to be a little bit more precise, well, we would do a proof by contradiction, and it would contradict what? The Archimedean property, right? So let's just, on the side here, uh, if by contradiction, assume that that there is k such that 1 plus n a is less than k for every n. Okay. 
then n a is less than k minus one, which means that n is less than k minus one over a for every n. So this contradicts the Archimedean property. So C to the n is bigger than something which is not bounded. Therefore, it's not bounded itself. So 1 plus n a is not bounded. And C to the n is not bounded either. That's because it's larger than. Okay. Yeah, of course, if you had shown that uh, it's smaller than something which is not bounded, it doesn't prove anything. Okay. It's because we have shown uh, that it's bigger than something which is not bounded. So if C to the n is not bounded, what can I say about its convergence? It doesn't converge, right? Because convergence implies bounded. That's equivalent to not bounded implies not convergent by taking the contrapositive, right? We, we know that convergent implies bounded. And this is logically equivalent to not bounded implies not convergent. So C to the n does not converge. when C is strictly bigger than 1. Now, to get the complete picture of this, uh, we should look also at C equal to 1. So if C in epsilon is equal to 1, we have two possibilities. Either C is 1 and C to the n is always 1, and this, of course, converges to 1. Or C is minus 1, and then C to the n is minus 1 to the n, and this does not converge. Okay? Uh, we use the word diverges sometimes instead of does not converge. So now we have a complete picture for the geometric sequences C to the n. So we know exactly what happens for every possible value of C. So that's one way to show that the sequence does not converge, is to show that it's not bounded. However, in the case of minus 1 to the n, that doesn't work because it's bounded, and we still want to show that it doesn't converge. So we need another method. The other method is provided by the idea of subsequences. So uh, what we do now is define this. So definition. Uh, let G1 to yeah, be a sequence of naturals. OK, so we pick uh, naturals, st a strictly increasing sequence of naturals. Our first one is bigger than 1, and then uh, we pick the other ones in a strictly manner, uh, st increasing manner. Now, the subsequence, uh, the, the sequence. A, J, N is called the subsequence of 
of it. Okay, so we are we are given a sequence a, and then we are given a sequence of integers j n, and a j n is called a subsequence of a n. What we are really doing here is a composition of functions, okay? Because we are first doing the operation of picking the j n, and now using the operation a. So we are, we are doing f of g of x. That's, that's what we are doing. So typically, Examples of Jn, uh, you can take all the even naturals. You could take the odd ones. You can take uh, only the powers of 2, and so on. There are many different possibilities. These are the most popular ones. Now, the main property about uh, subsequences is the following. AN converges to A if and only if all subsequences <coughs> of AN converge with this property, we can show that minus 1 to the n does not converge. Why? Well, we pick the subsequence of even ends, it converges to 1. We pick the subsequence of odd naturals, it converges to minus 1. Therefore, it's not possible to have all subsequences converging to the same limit. Okay, and minus 1 to the n does not converge. So we write this down. First thing, let's prove this. Okay, so we need uh, to prove both implications. First thing, assume that AN converges to A. First, second thing, let's pick a JN. A sequence of naturals. So we take j1 bigger than 1, which is bigger than 2, which is bigger than j. Now one thing which is going to be important is that jn must be larger than or equal to n for every natural n. Do you see why Jn is necessarily bigger than n or equal to n? Jn is a sequence of naturals, and you are skipping some naturals. But you must be increasing. So you are always going to be at least at the level n. For instance, you, even if you take J1 equal 1, your J2 is strictly bigger than, well, I shouldn't say that. Let's, J1 is larger than or equal to 1. That's the general condition. J2 is strictly bigger than J1. But for a natural to be strictly bigger than J1, uh, and J1 is le uh, at least 1, you need J2 
to be at least 2. If j2 is 2, is, uh, is 1, for instance, this doesn't work because then j2 cannot be strictly bigger than j1. So you need j2 to be at least 2. You can do a proof by induction with this thing. The idea being that you are dealing with naturals, and naturals advance by 1. So you cannot lose anything. You, mu you must always be above n. So that's uh, an important uh, observation for what forms. So we want to show convergence of A, J, N. Okay? What we are trying to show is since A, N converges to A, A, J, N must converge to A, whatever J, N is. Well, let's write down what this is. So we write down the complete proof, the complete definition, which is that for every epsilon, there exists an N, so that if N is bigger than capital N, then A n minus A is less than epsilon. Now, my objective is to have this written for J n instead of n. If I'm able to show that A J n minus A is less than epsilon, I'm done. That's what I'd like to do. Now, the reason I can do that is precisely because of this observation here. Because Jn goes faster than n, I know that if n is bigger than n, then Jn, which is at least n, is also bigger than capital N. Okay, that's the crucial remark here. My Jn is at least n. Therefore, if n is bigger than capital N, Jn is also bigger than capital N. Which means that I can apply this guy here with Jn instead of n. Okay. Many of the proofs that are due on Thursday are done using this model. What you want is to check a definition. The definition works if your lowercase n is large enough. Well, it doesn't matter. You, you can call this P or K or whatever you want. The, the, the important condition is for this thing here to be bigger than capital N. Because of our remark, we see that JN is bigger than capital N. So I can put it here and have that my equality is less than epsilon. Therefore, I have found a capital N for my new sequence AJN. It's the same one as before. Okay, I'm using the same capital N. In some of the proofs that you are to, to do for Thursday, sometimes the same capital N will work, sometimes you have to modify it. Okay, and uh, questions on this? So it's quite simple. We are just playing the, with a definition, but you need to be comfortable with this type of thing. Okay, just adjusting your definition to what you want. So this uh, proves the direct implication. Now let's look at the other implication. So for the converse, assume that All subsequences of AN converge to the same A. And this is a triviality because you you then say AN is a subsequence of itself. Because I can pick Jn equal n. If I pick Jn equal n, I get exactly the sequence An. Jn equal n is uh, legitimate because it's a sequence of naturals which is strictly increasing. So 
uh, I know that A n converges to A as well, and I'm done. Since all subsequences converge, A n converges too. So there is nothing to do really for the converse is a, is a triviality. The, the important part is the other way around where you show that if your sequence converges, then the subsequence converge, any subsequence converges to the same limit. Okay, so as promised, let's go back to minus one to the n. Let's call this b n. And then b two n is minus one to the two n, which is one for every n. And b two n plus one is minus one for every n. Therefore, B2n converges to 1, and B2n plus 1 converges to minus 1. Bn cannot converge. Okay. So now we have two methods to show that the sequence does not converge. Either you show that it's not a bounded sequence. If it's a bounded sequence, then you need to find two subsequences that converge to different limits. And you are done. Okay, so these are really the two methods that we are going to use. Questions? So let's go on with the squeezing principle. So assume that so keep the same notation a n is less than b n, which is less than c n for all n bigger than one. Assume also that An converges to L, and Cn converges to L. So I'm using the same letter, which means that it's the same limit. Okay? So I'm assuming that An and Cn converge, converge to the same limit. Then Bn is also converging to L. So this proves two things. One, it proves that when you are squeezed between two sequences that converge to the same limit, you converge, which we don't know a priori for Bn. And second thing, it shows that the limit must be the common limit. This is again a good uh, proof because it only uses the definitions. Okay, we just write down what the definitions are. So we start by saying take epsilon positive. So this is a proof of the squeezing we start by taking positive epsilon, and um, we write down that uh, an converges to L. So this means that there is n such that if n is bigger than n, then an minus L is less than epsilon. So that's for the convergence of an. We do the same thing for cn.
Isn't there something uh, a little sloppy here in what I'm writing? Well, what should I do? Yeah. Uh, capital N is the same. Capital N is not the same. Very well. Okay. There is a capital N for one sequence. I cannot call it again capital N for the other sequence. It's uh, I don't know. Maybe they're equal. Probably not. So I should call one and one and the other one and two. But I want my uh, statements to be true uh, for both of them, uh, for both sequences. So what I do is I, I say, well, define now, maybe this. define n as the largest of these two numbers. Okay, I know they exist. I take the biggest one of the two. Then uh, this is going to be true, and this is going to be true for my n above capital N. And I have both statements true. And uh, so what we do now is take for n bigger than capital N, we have the first statement which holds true, Let's rewrite it as a n minus l between minus epsilon and epsilon. Uh, the other one is also true, c minus epsilon and epsilon. And now let's go back to Bn. What do we know? We know that Bn is larger than An. So Bn minus L is larger than An minus L. And An minus L is larger than minus epsilon. For N larger than capital N. So this gives me one side of what I'm trying to show. And to get the other side, I start with Bn minus L less than Cn minus L. Okay, so, so I start with Bn less than Cn, then Bn minus L less than Cn minus L, and Cn minus L is less than epsilon. So now I have my double inequality. Okay. Now I use the uh, two sides to say, well, for n larger than capital N, we have that C n then a n minus cell is bigger than minus epsilon and smaller than epsilon. Okay. I use that this is less than epsilon, and that this is bigger than minus epsilon. This, according to the lemma with uh, uh, about absolute values, is the same as saying that uh, a n minus l is less than epsilon. Uh, thank you. V. Okay. So, but uh, these inequalities hold, right? So we have Bn minus L bigger than minus epsilon, Bn minus L less than epsilon. Thank you. And here it's Bn as well. Always remember that your definition with uh, the epsilon is this, but also that. This is quite useful too. You need to use both ways. Depends what you are trying to do. So this proves the squeezing principle. Okay, we have proved that Bn converges to L.
Okay, application of that. Assume that A n converges to zero and that B n uh, is bounded. Then A and B n converges to zero. Okay, I have one sequence going to zero, the other one is bounded. Uh, the product converges to zero. And we can, so to prove that, we know that there is a B such that Bn is less than B for all n. Definition of bounded. Therefore, we get that A and B N is to A and B N is less than B A N for all n. And on this side, we know that this goes to 0. So, this uh, clearly converges to zero, it's a constant, and this must converge to zero as well. But maybe we need a little work here. Uh, we haven't done it yet, I think. But it's clear that it's going to converge to zero because this converges to zero and you're just multiplying by a constant. So it shouldn't be a big surprise to show that this converges to zero. Therefore, so uh, admitting that point, uh, by the squeezing principle, A, A n, B n converges to zero. But we have seen already that showing that something converges to zero in absolute value is the same as showing that it converges to zero. This is equivalent to A and B and converge, converging to zero. That's one of the things we do. Yes? In taking for granted that B times the absolute value of A converges to zero, aren't you assuming a special case of what you're trying to prove? Yeah, so that's why we need to prove that. It, it is a special case of what we're trying to prove. Very special, I mean, uh, but still. Uh, so, so now uh, let's so let's prove that fact. A n converges to zero, B is a constant, B a n converges to zero. So what am I trying to do? Well, and that should be on my scratch paper, that shouldn't be my proof. My end uh, result should be B a n uh, minus zero which is B A N is less than epsilon. That's what I'd like to do. And I'd like to do that using that A N goes to zero. So uh,
really what I should start with is this thing and then go up. Okay, so by doing a little computation on my scratch paper, I know what to do now. So a proof goes like this. Well, there is a trivial case. If B is zero, then B A N is zero, and therefore this goes to zero, there is nothing to do. Now, if B is different from zero, then there is, so let epsilon be any number bigger than zero. I know that there exists a capital N, so that if N is bigger than capital N, then Uh, an minus zero is less than epsilon over absolute value of b. So my epsilon is strange looking here, okay? But this is fine because if epsilon is strictly positive, epsilon over absolute value of b is also strictly positive, and I can't find a capital N that does this. See, it's just another name for epsilon. I could call this guy epsilon prime, and this guy epsilon wouldn't make any difference. Okay? What the definition tells you is take any positive number. We usually call it epsilon, but we can call it this, provided it's strictly positive. So we get this, which means that a n b is less than epsilon which means that a n b minus zero is less than epsilon four and bigger than n. So that proves that our claim that a n b goes to zero. Okay, so we, sh we should have first done this and then the skewing principle. It puts a little excitement in that. You don't think so? Okay. So, uh, good. Now, uh, so the, 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 this important fact that when a n goes to zero and b n is bounded, uh, we have that a n b n goes to zero. Now, do I really need bounded? So, or am I adding hypotheses because I'm not strong enough to prove things without so many hypotheses? So, let me rephrase this. If a n goes to zero, is it always the case that a and b n goes to zero? Counter example? Yes. So you do need something here. B n bounded is one possibility, but if you put nothing, you may run into surprises. Observation, if a n is 1 over n, goes to 0, and b n is n, then a n, b n does not converge to 0. It's 1. And of course, you can do anything. If you put n square here, then it doesn't converge at all. It's not even bounded. So. This, uh, uh, the fact that it's bounded is quite important in this result.
Well, maybe we have done enough for today. Let's uh, stop here.